All right, good afternoon. So speaking of uh, audience participation and the audience helping out, um, I want to thank everybody that's been here this week and has been so cooperative. New hotel, new challenges. Um, it, was, uh, it was great to have everybody being so cooperative in you know, trying to fill the rooms, dealing with it whenever we had to rearrange where the tracks were. You guys were fantastic. Why don't you give yourselves a hand? All right, so there's been some really, really interesting malware and uh, different intelligence platforms that have been um, uh, unveiled in the past uh, couple years. And this talk is going to break down what it's going to do on networks, not just on individual boxes. I mean, the stuff that it's doing on the boxes is fascinating enough, but this is uh, kind of a, a new area of research. So let's, uh, let's give Omer a uh, big hand. So hello, uh, thank you very much for coming out to listen to my talk. Today I'm going to present you an offensive network security research related to the nation state uh, attacks targeting the telecommunication networks. My name is Omer. Uh, just briefly starting, what we are going to cover is uh, introduction to the telco network architecture the network protocols that are being highly targeted such as GRX networks architecture and the SS7 protocol. Um, and then we are briefly take a look on the into practical attack scenarios on these GSM network components. And once we establish basic understanding of the attack surface of the GSM network protocols, we will switch to the main concern of this talk. Uh, the government implants, uh, the region malware. Uh, before de delving to the, it is capabilities, I will try to briefly remind the uh, root kit techniques as the region is the multi-component long-term intelligence gathering root kit. Afterwards, we will uh, browse through the region capabilities and, and then analyze how it could be weaponized in uh, offensive GSM network hacking. As recently, there are more uh, technically complex implants discovered by the researchers. We will briefly take a look on them. And yeah, finally, uh, uh, I'm going to present you how uh, some of the techniques employed by the region malware uh, implant could be re implemented by a high level programming language. I'm specifically talking about uh, uh, Windows driver kit development and the Win API programming in Windows, uh, uh, Windows systems. So, uh, just br briefly myself about. My name is Omer. Uh, my academical background is computer science. I used to help academic research at university in uh, quantum cryptography and uh, artificial intelligence. I'm currently employed with KPN uh, Royal Dutch Telecom in uh, Netherlands. And I used to work for companies such like IBM, IAS, and Verizon. Uh, I perform a, a security assessment on my day-to-day -day work. And I'm very interested in malware analysis and root good techniques, and I am actively doing research in these areas. Uh, this is the red team. We are based in Amsterdam, and it is only a six minutes train uh, trip from Amsterdam. It is the most uh, popular touristic attraction center, as known as uh, Red Light District. And if you ever happen to be in Amsterdam, please visit us and have a beer or a drink with us to do some uh, nerdy stuff together with us. Uh, Uh, what inspired us to carry out this research was to analyze uh, uh, and the determine attack services of the GSM and in inner GSM networks. Uh, governments are not only hacking their own citizens but spy on each other. 
by covert hacking operations with tools like Regin and st Stealth malwares. Uh, surveillance programs reach a cradle level, and the recent leaks uh, confirm that the network devices, telecom networks, are the victims or the contributors of the such programs. Uh, once Regina hacking campaign revealed, pretty much each and every telecommunication company got paranoid, tried, tried to make sure that they haven't been affected uh, by the same attack. Uh, root kits are requiring a lot to learn about, especially operating system internals, uh, kernel working principles, computer architecture. So I'm sure not only understanding the incident, but also to be able to reproduce and simulate the attack would mean a lot to the dudes whose day-to-day uh, -day, uh, work is to break systems, especially such as uh, read, red team members. So just very briefly, uh, GSM network architecture looks like that. It's a very complex uh, uh, network architecture. However, let us try to break it down under the following core elements. Uh, the GSM network is developed for uh, digital mobile radio and standard uh, wireless and voice communication. GPRS uh, uh, is an extension of GSM network that provides mobile uh, wireless and data communication. And UMTS stands for the Universal Mobile Telecommunication System, an extension of GPRS network that moves towards on our IP network by delivering broad but broadband information, including commerce and entertainment services to the mobile users. And UMT UMTPA defines interfaces for radio network controllers, node B, packet to switch, and circuit switched, and RNC to RNC communication. RNS performs uh, base station controller functions in GSM and GPRS networks. Um, a GSM network consists of the following components like uh, mobile stations, ba based uh, uh, transceiver st uh, station, base station controller, base station subsystem, mobile switching center, authentication center, home location uh, uh, register, uh, visitor location registers. These are the most important components of the GSM network and it is being highly targeted uh, in this uh, region related attacks. So very briefly I try to explain what are the, uh, the uh, functionalities of the, these components and we will delve into how it could be uh, targeted by the government in plus uh, in a uh, espionage campaign. Uh, the mobile stage, uh, mobile uh, Station is the starting point of the mobile wireless network. So it can contain elements such like mobile terminal and terminal equipments. Uh, base station uh, transceiver st uh, station, when a subscriber uses the uh, mobile uh, station to do make a call to the network, uh, the uh, uh, mobile uh, station transmits call requests to the base transfer receiver. Uh, base uh, station transfer uh, st uh, station includes radio equipment such like antenna, signaling, processing units, uh, amplifier necessary for radio transmission within a geographical area called cell. Um, I like to uh, tell very briefly about to, uh, uh, the uh, GSM network units uh, that uh, carry and employs information, uh, important information such as equipment item to the register uh, is a database that stores international uh, mobile equipment identities. 
is known as IMEIs uh, of the mobile situation in the network. This is an equipment identified assigned by the manufacturer of the mobile uh, station uh, that provides security features such as blocking calls from the handset and that have been uh, stolen, uh, like stolen phones within the network and attached to the mobile uh, network. HLR is home location register. is a central database for all users to register GSM network and it stores static information about the subscri uh, subscriber such as international mobile subscriber identity, subscriber services and a key for authentication to subscribers. Another important uh, uh, component is the authentication center. And with the HLR, the authentication center database contains algorithms for authenticating subscribers to the necessary keys for the encryption and safeguard user input authentication. And the last element uh, is VLR, visitor location register. Uh, is a distributed database that temporarily stores information about the mobile uh, stations are active in the geographic area which is uh, VLR is responsible for. And GSM network architecture has uh, various interfaces for communication among its network elements. The mobile transmits to the BTS and BTS to the BSC. Uh, and the communication also occurs over the interfaces to the management databases, so HLR, VLR, uh, and authentication control unit. So these are the key elements that can be targeted by the attackers over either uh, SS7 protocol or GRX uh, protocol. And how we are concerned and how the region the malware plays roles in uh, such attacks. Uh, the region malware specifically targets the GSM networks, antivirus companies say that the region has been designed to uh, be a low key type of malware that can potentially be used as PNH campaigns. And according to the claims of antivirus companies, it has been uh, active since 2008. And this is a group of demonstration. The picture was taken in Germany. Uh, they were uh, protesting against GCHQ and NSA to get their data removed from databases. I was also one of the participants in this uh, demonstration. So our uh, work pretty much looked like this. Since our competitors, actually enemies <laughs> uh, were high profile organizations such like GS, uh, GCHQ and NSA which always listen to their customers. Was, uh, our approach pretty much looked like this. Like uh, using old school techniques of the North Korea to bring them to the, their knees. But we didn't give up and take a try. So in order to determine attack scenarios, we decided to perform a large scale service enumeration from the base stations. Uh, for these reasons, we have passively tapped the GSM communication from the red, uh, radio base stations and we greatly utilized the Michael Osmanis uh, passive network tapping utility in our research. I would like to thank him. I think he's not in one of the audiences as he uh, left tomorrow, I think. We talked about this. And yeah, pretty much 
and we try to collect as much uh, information as possible from different endpoints of the 2G, 4G, and LTE communication. It included the possible management services that were reachable from the base station, uh, from the network switches. And you would definitely be shocked what we have discovered on these assessments. So access, absence of the physical intrusion, uh, uh, intrusion detection devices, that if a device uh, is altered or changed, most GSM companies don't even care possibility of it and they don't take into account it. And we found lots of vulnerable services running and accessible from the base stations and reachable management interfaces with default passwords, public-private key for different uh, units to communicate with. Uh, the absence of the tamper resistance and the unauthorized access protection, well, the network tapping shouldn't be, shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't be possible otherwise. And improper network segmentation, inner, inner non-routable segments of the uh, telco company could even be accessible. And core GPRS network and network subsystem could be exploitable ex as well. So since the base stations are one of the most auto GSM network companies, we wanted to see whether it is possible to attack other inner companies and they store juicy information such as uh, access control unit, HLR, VLR. If you ever uh, perform a similar, uh, similar assessment, you could see that uh, radio stations, especially the segmentations, are not correctly implemented. So it is uh, theoretically and uh, practically possible. So let's take a look on the network components that could be targeted by locally and remotely. Uh, G uh, GPRS roaming exchange acts as a hub for the GPRS uh, communications from uh, uh, roaming users, removing them need for a dedicated link between GPRS ser service provider. It's a network consists of peering interconnected uh, uh, units. So the main GRX gateways are located for Europe in Amsterdam, for Asia in Singapore. Essentially, when you travel abroad, your phone works regardless of uh, your location. So the, the communication is being held, uh, utilized by GRX networks. So what is GRX networks? Uh, GRX networks is a roaming exchange, interconnected networks. Simply, in a simpler word, it's your local GSM provider abroad. It's a trust-based, highly interconnected network that made uh, internet sharing possible. And a failure or malicious activity would affect the multiple uh, connected machines. GPRS tunneling protocol is a group of IP-based communication protocols used to carry general packet radio services within the GSM, UMTS, and LTE networks. GDP can be decomposed into separate protocols like such like GTPC, GTPU, and GTP. Uh, GTPC is used within GPRS core network for signaling between gateway GPRS support nodes, as known as GGSN and serving GPRS support nodes SGSN. Uh, so this allows an activation on a user's behalf, context activation to deactivate same session to adjust quality of the service parameters or update a session for subscriber who has just arrived from another SGSN. Uh, GTP can be used within UDP and TCP. UDP is either recommended or mandatory except for the tunnel link X25 in version zero. But GTP version one is used only on the UDP protocol. So 
One of the most important feature of the GTP tunneling is that DNS on GRX is used for resolving APNs to set up GTP tunnel. An access point is, is known as APN is the name for the gateway between GPRS, 3G and 4G mobile network and another computer network for currently public internet. So we gather some network dumps and analyze it, how the GRX network uh, flows look like. And there are a lot of uh, uh, sensitive information here. Okay, in the following network capture, a standard GTP packet transmits a lot of information like IMSA, subscriber network, uh, information, tunnel endpoints. This might also be correlate a person and his activity with the rest of the world. As you can see here, uh, here is the API, APN access networks and the DNS uh, uh, information. So uh, are you telling all your communication intercepted and logged, including your physical location? Well, we are not so paranoid, but it can be possible in such cases because your protocols already providing and exchanging within the trust-based networks globally. Well, uh, how about SS7 and SIGTRAN protocol? SS7 is a signaling protocol which built like 30 years ago and uh, widely common use protocol and uh, contains a lot of vulnerabilities. Uh, SS7 introduces uh, procedures for user identification, routing, billing, and call management. And it looks like, as in the picture, uh, the data link uh, corresponds to the MTP layer, physical layer, MTP2 layer, MTP3 layer, and, and some of the features, if you look, what we are really interested in, SS7 is uh, flow control of the transmitted information, traffic congestion control, peer and the status detection, traffic monitoring and monitoring measurement. And, Everything built upon the SS7 uh, protocol since then, uh, like voice over IP interconnected, uh, uh, IP networking, and lots of new uh, networks within the uh, GSM network uh, utilizes SS7 protocol. Like, it simply looks like this. Uh, uh, your modems, fax devices, analog phones are utilized SS7 protocol for signaling. So, an SS7 protocol analysis revealed uh, really sensitive information is being transmitted between different nodes in the network. For instance, uh, some of the uh, interesting informations are could be uh, related to the air call is calling number, cold number, call duration, call duration, and call status. Uh, there are some publicly available tools where you can analyze network, and uh, we also created a Wireshark uh, script to analyze and tag the old network flow information. And lately, I uh, found a, a Windows utility on the uh, slide. You can download and analyze uh, the SS7 uh, uh, network uh, flow. So, SS7 protocol and attack flows. Well, I think the information is being transmitted over SS7 protocol is enough to feed into the, our giant uh, uh, big metadata uh, database. So practical attack scenarios. Uh, let us assume that uh, two victims are communicating, talking to each other uh, on the subscriber line. So it is possible to uh, introduce a, a 
uh, change in the VLR and MA MSC uh, database. Simply attacker introduces a, a conference call type of uh, mechanism to uh, uh, intercept uh, calls of two victims. Uh, it's also possible to perform attacks, uh, subscriber service change attacks. Uh, for example, an attacker introduces a decoy MSC VLR uh, database within the uh, 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 GSM network that he can uh, supposedly reach to do SS7 protocol. So he can do uh, much m uh, more attacks such like interception of SMS calls, interception of outgoing calls, redirections of incoming and outgoing calls, and making changes in user views and the balance. So in other words, pretty much anything including financial frauds as well. Uh, s uh, during my research, I was uh, cooperating with the researchers from uh, Finland. So I was informed that they have found another vulnerability in SS7. Uh, the vulnerability is simply exploiting the relationship between MAMC using AR uh, access uh, module within the uh, GSM network. So they are able to uh, uh, unblock the stolen uh, mobile devices even uh, without requiring a a legitimate uh, GSM card att attached to the phone. So uh, attacks look like this. Uh, simply the modified uh, uh, in my uh, information sent to the VHAR database and change made and simply uh, it prevents the verification of the v a VLR database and prevents uh, from blocking the phone. So it simply uh, cannot disable phone communicating through the GSM uh, uh, network that the phone attached to. And if you like to uh, read more about this attack type, this uh, uh, academic paper will be presented on IEE uh, conference in August, so it will be available. So the SS7 uh, network is not only being targeted by the good guys or the government, but also hacking, hacking team was after the SS7 hacks. Um, th this is a leak, uh, the information uh, mail exchange between hacking team and they're one of their customers. So they were trying to implement uh, a, a malware that are specifically targeting SS7 signaling protocol. So they were after uh, their victims to locate their, uh, find out uh, the phone location. And according to the mail exchange, uh, the location information, uh, how they are going to uh, uh, obtain location information is just simply querying SS7 signaling protocol and uh, mobile uh, phone location could be uh, obtained by such uh, query. So, well, these are the brief attack techniques, so I think I'm hope I hope it should be clear why uh, 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 nation state actors are uh, interested in hacking and attacking GSM networks. So I will briefly cover the rootkit techniques, the basics of rootkit techniques. Uh, well, when we mention about, talk about the rootkit, rootkits are, could be uh, analyzed in two categories and user modes and kernel modes. Uh, when we say rootkit, user mode rootkit, we are simply referring as an executable or a DLL. And it employs some of the hooking techniques. And when we say uh, kernel mode rootkit, we are simply referring a, a, a Windows driver. 
that can employ, for example, SDD, System Service Descriptive Hooking, IDT Hooking, IRP Dispatch Table Hooking, and etc. So, what is hooking is simply to be able to intercept a function, uh, alter it, and uh, change the content, and sometimes uh, uh, intercept and prevent execution the way we want. In, uh, uh, in rootkit and malicious application, uh, simply everything is hooking. Let's assume uh, uh, implementing a keylogger, you are simply monitoring uh, calls of the Windows uh, system and you are simply logging the functions that corresponds to the uh, Windows API calls and you are simply logging it. And uh, hooking techniques also can be used for instance uh, antivirus and uh, firewall uh, uh, producers for the good intents. For instance, uh, Let's assume a, a malware infected your computer and you are uh, looking for uh, hooks and malicious uh, activities by simply monitoring kernel calls or hooks and how it behaves on the uh, kernel. So some of the basic rootkit techniques, like if you analyze a rootkit on the user mode, that can employ, for instance, uh, DLL injections, uh, import address table hooking, or inline hooking techniques. And the uh, kernel uh, level loot kit uh, driver can employ SSD hooking, IRP hooking, IDT hooking, GTT hooking, and sys enter hooking techniques. You can uh, find quite a lot of uh, information and publicly available sample codes on internet. So I will not uh, go into too much into these details. Well, once I stumbled upon the region malware, and after completing the uh, analysis on the network, the research I uh, performed, my next goal was to analyze every single component of the region malware and uh, simulate on the network. So, antivirus companies really did a great job analyzing the malware, but they didn't dive into what actually being uh, targeted and uh, achieved by the malware. So, my goal was to understand the malware and reproduce it and re-implement it. So, that might help uh, remedy it to be uh, understandable by the GSM uh, uh, providers. Uh, so region malware really looked like very complex malware I have ever seen. Uh, it consists of different modules, uh, user level modules, kernel level modules, um, and it uh, used very specific uh, feature of uh, operating system called orchestrator. It's simply system-oriented architecture and every, every call being uh, organized and prioritized uh, depending on the RPC calls. So uh, the drawing simply shows the stages, like uh, we can break down the region malware into five different uh, uh, stages. The most important stages are stage four and the fifth and uh, simply stage uh, first to third are uh, uh, extracting the next stage and decrypting it. So simply disguising from uh, detection of the antiviruses. So there were quite a challenges while analyzing this malware because nobody had the very first uh, dropper module. So it is it's still a little bit unclear how the systems were affected and initially uh, infected by the malware. And as the uh, region targeted multiple uh, institutions and GSM networks, it's still unclear. However, uh, 
And another challenge was multi-stage and uh, encrypted structure. So it was really hard to find uh, samples. Uh, even if uh, you had a sample, if you don't have the next stage correctly, uh, uh, there, it could be a problem to extract it. So modules were invoked so architecture by the framework, uh, malware data stored inside a virtual file system, and the research uh, JSM network luckily had no indication of compromise. That was good. So my solution was to totally reverse engineer the orchestrator, uh, use the uh, memory dumps that are publicly available on internet, static analysis common to the everyone uh, via IDA Pro and uh, similar tools, instrumentation of the calls, the re-implementation, what I actually did, and the dynamic analysis. So from uh, stage one to three were simply loaders. I will go through a little bit quicker because we are about to run out of time. And I want to do a demonstration, what I have implemented. Stage one was simply extracting to the next stage uh, from first to three. If you can look at the system calls, they are simply uh, allocating a memory in kernel space and uh, mapping to next stage and extracting it. Uh, stage two is a little bit different because it implements uh, extract the next stage as a blob of uh, registry uh, blob. So it is really rare and very specific uh, uh, f um, feature of the region malware. Uh, similar to the, as you can see, uh, the details of the registry keys and uh, mapping functions, uh, memory allocation uh, calls. And stage third and the fourth could be the most uh, interesting one because stage three is simply the uh, brain of the uh, region uh, malware. It's simply uh, accepting uh, orchestrator calls and uh, executing them. So, uh, for instance, uh, it was attaching kernel modules, kernel uh, module calls, and executing them within a, a, a process memory of the executable. So how could we weaponize it? Uh, I simply analyzed uh, what it does in the uh, orchestrator call and try to uh, uh, re-implement them using Windows uh, driver kit. You can take a look on them later on. The code will be available. So just very quickly, it, this comparison might be a little bit uh, subjective, but according to the technical complexity, in my opinion, uh, the Dugu 2 is the most complex uh, government implant it has ever been seen. And well, each malware implements uh, very specific, very own features. Uh, so, after reverse engineering and doing dynamic and static analysis, I re-implemented the region uh, stage three and the fourth, a little bit uh, tighter scope. So, it had uh, such features like cover channel data extraction, rather run as a thread of the legitimate application's address space. Orchestra simulator, it hasn't finished completely yet, but it simply simulates the orchestrator. And file system and registry network calls by hooking and backdoor and Kaleger uh, module. So I will look up the demo. So Jimmer is a utility where you can see the changes of the uh, 
system within the system, for example, hooks and etc. Right now, there is no any hook and etc. Uh, what I have implemented is simply a kernel module uh, driver. This corresponds to the region is uh, stage four, and an executable maybe stage uh, third or the two or all combination. What it simply does is simulates and uh, uh, perform malicious uh, uh, activities in the system. So I will show you demonstrate very quickly. Uh, this is a batch file. The region malware hasn't been uh, weaponized yet. So it simply runs on the systems and extracts and runs the uh, driver and the executable, malicious executable. Can I interrupt? Yes, sure. Great, what do I hit next? All right. You all know how this works. Is he doing a good job? Yeah. All right. We have ourselves a new speaker. He's doing demos. They're working. See, that never happens. I like the old DEF CON. <laughs> but anyway. Cheers. Cheers. All right. That's going to help the demos. Trust me. Thank you. <laughs> I have a little, uh, a little gift here for you. Somebody dropped it off in the speaker room. It appears to plug into the USB on your computer. It's got a lot of Chinese writing on it. And well, you know what? Good luck with that. I would not use that. So I'm simply executing the batch file that will uh, run the uh, I will show you. Register the little small uh, region like uh, rootkit in the system and then uh, run it in the system and then execute to stage one. It's running now. Okay, I run it. So it is executed. Um, well, as you can see, I implemented the uh, rootkit using very simple techniques. Uh, for the beginning, it simply utilizes the system save uh, SSDT uh, hooks. Very simple system, but efficient. And uh, stage one is also executed, the lead code. It simply protects the executable and it hides it. It implements also some hooks from the, uh, to hide from the registry. And I will briefly demonstrate it what it is.
so I will try to delete this one. It's disabled. And I also show you a very specific feature. I'm a standard user now. Uh, is a client I have implemented. So it's, you can simply connect back to the uh, malicious uh, infected system. And you can uh, perform some uh, things like executing uh, uh, commands on the system, for example. Um, it has some uh, uh, malicious features such like encrypting the entire uh, Windows uh, partition, uh, 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 killing the system and writing, uh, messing up the with uh, MBR structure. And I also want to show you, for example, it protects the uh, uh, stage one executable. For example, if you say it couldn't find, but actually when I do like this to execute, it is there. But for example, when I uh, try to show another executable which doesn't exist, uh, it, it gives normal error, but actually the executable is there. Uh, what is uh, a uh, rootkit does is simply intercept the calls. Uh, 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 ZW query uh, kernel calls and it simply hides it. And that's it. Okay. Thank you very much.